Huzzah, Rangers! This is Phil Harris here at the Jacks Rangers Show. I am joined with Bozo Six at the Granite Bunker. How the hell are you? I am doing outstanding. Cam, we missed that hair, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That is a. I mean, some people like if they cut their hair, it's no big deal, uh, you know. But it's just it's he's he doesn't look like the same guy. It's kind of strange. It is no uh, big deal to me, but then when I see it, I miss it. Right. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's a it's I mean, it was great locks for sure. Like no, very few guys on this team have better hair than Cam Davidowitz previously. Uh, rest in peace to those locks. But uh, I wanted to quickly go through our sponsor this evening, a little ad read here. This episode is sponsored by Inkify, custom printing and embroidery since 2010. Inkify provides high quality decorated apparel nationwide from ordering the apparel to printing, adding a private label label folding bagging and fulfillment they handle it all so you don't have to visit inkify.com to get started on your order and tell them tjrs sent you and you will get 15 percent off your entire order um i know you would like to get some shir uh, shirts done at some point bozo with a uh, certain uh referee on there with the the nose did you want to go ahead and give uh, your boy a little shout out no negative i already got my t-shirt uh i'm good with that uh, don't want to, don't want to bring in Inkify as a co-conspirator for the shirt. <laughs> Fair so the, the producer of the shirt, thank you, will remain anonymous. Love uh, that. The shirt, the shirt is uh, doing well. I'd uh, like to, Hey, congrats Federico and sell me Boli. I think is uh, the nickname that they posted on there. 50 appearances in the middle. Uh, incredible. I wish it was like 48 or 46, just less all the free Jacks games. Yeah. But yeah. man, congrats. He actually, he actually didn't, I was, I was thinking back to the, we'll get into it. I was pretty critical of him uh, during the match, but upon reflection and replay, I'm mm -hmm. trash and I don't wow. know what I'm talking about. Wow. He actually did a pretty good job. I think. Well, you know what? It takes a, it's a it takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. And uh, I believe that was a minutes of just being incorrect during the call. And he watched it over again, and he did pretty good. So Either that or every dog has its day. I mean, every dog has its day. You know, so that 100%. was his day in, in the Houston waning sun. Shout out to the terrible, terrible oh. sun, sun glare. Yikes. Yeah, that is that is super bad. Like, I don't know how they fix that because obviously the cameras are on that side, and they're, it looks like that's their designated area. But somebody yeah. forgot to like close the the stands there. The sun peeks through. It doesn't look great on TV. They just need to read their farmer's almanac, Phil, and adjust the game time accordingly, brother. That's it. <laughs> push it go. push it later by an hour or push it earlier by an hour, but do something. Absolutely. Uh, I did want to mention there were some eyebrows raised when the team sheet was released for this game that we're about to review. Uh, both Josh Larry um, Larson and Mitch Jacobson starting, and Mitch Jacobson was listed as the captain. We got clarification from Free Jacks general manager TK, who said Mitch is the on field captain and Larry is the club captain, which I believe just refers to everything off of the pitch there. So I just wanted to clear, clarify that because I know a lot of people were questioning uh, what took place there with uh, Mitch Jacobson being the captain for the Houston game. And it sounds like he will be the on-field captain uh, as long as he is available for selection going forward. Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. Uh, wasn't controversial for me, not because of anything. He was he took them through the season last year, and now he's mm -hmm. back, so he reassumes mm -hmm. the role. I have no idea what club captain means. I would seek further clarification there. I just I listen. I'm not saying it's not a title. I'm just saying right. I I don't get it. Uh, but from a practical standpoint, especially as a lock and a loose forward. Mm -hmm. Those are positions that require that are very physically demanding in terms of impact. Like both make a lot of tackles, both get around the pitch. Mm -hmm. So I think it's actually a good thing. Um, there was always, uh, I guess, real quickly, there was always a rotating who's the next captain up. Like sometimes it was Mitch Wilson, sometimes right. it was this guy. We didn't really have a clear um, other captain mm -hmm. other than Larry prior to mitch jacobson so i actually really like this between the two of them um it, it's great and then having two leaders on the field is i think is always great and then we you had you've uh i think you were talking about this on the live stream you know the team is full of of full of leaders that's uh, right it's incredible so i mean that's part of being a leader too is is i think probably one of the hallmarks 
of great leaders is that they can also follow. So sure. I don't really care whether you're club captain, on the field captain. None of that matters to me. Both incredible players. Looking forward to watching them play on Saturday. LFG. LFG, let's continue on here. I did get a message from a new Ranger who was asking about Cam's absence from the 23 since the return of Mitch Jacobson from New Zealand uh, that began uh, at the beginning of this month coming. Uh, he just had recently had a kid, so uh, he's he's back now from New Zealand for 2024. And the emergence of Seta Baker from NPC involved in this team Cam's playing time could be limited, but that could change, of course, with rotation, a loss of form from the current starters, and you know, which we don't want to see injuries, of course, as well, is always a factor in rugby. So iron sharpens iron, Bozo. Uh, it's good to have such a deep roster, but that means some, you know, some of our favorite players don't get the appearances that we think that they should, or whatever the case may be. It's just a matter of, you know, we got a lot of good players in that loose forward area. Yeah. And like, I, you know, I already kind of touched on this. It's a, it's a high turnover area in terms of injuries. I mean, these guys, yep. it's not a wonder if you look at the top tacklers in the MLR, it's almost exclusively like locks, loose forwards, centers, you know, mm -hmm. so there's, and having Cam is more than capable of playing in the league. Uh, expect to see more of him. He did travel with the team to Houston. If the, if you had the discerning eye, you caught him in the photo. So it's not like he wasn't down there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's a bummer, uh, especially the local guys. You want to see them, you want to see them playing. Uh, he does. He is an American, so that he has that going for him. So when as they shift and shuffle the mm -hmm. twenty three and the international slots, uh, you could see him come back into the twenty three. Yeah, it's 100%. a bummer to not see him play. Love my Plymouth State. Let's go. That's right. Yeah, it's uh, Bozo and Cam, both Plymouth State alums. Yeah, for the folks that do not uh, were not aware of that, I wanted to mention the watch along that took place during the game. Um, of course, every single away game, we have a watch along that accompanies the broadcast of the actual game. Uh, the Granite Bunker, uh, excuse me, the Granite Bunker watch along for the Houston game went a lot better than the Chicago uh, version, which had some technical difficulties. I think it was our best one yet, Bozo. What do you think about that? Yeah, I got to do less screaming about the referee, but I think that that'll get better as we don't have our boy in the middle there. So sure. that's good. Uh, I'm glad it went off uh, without the technical difficulties. The Roku was a was a huge, huge win. Mm -hmm. uh, loving it. Like to apologize to the loyal listeners to TJRS who listen to every second of this show. You've heard my beautiful voice coming over your speakers like multiple times here. Just Pulling the Greg Jennings, you know, putting the team on the back and just keep 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 putting me in, Coach. I'm here. You know, we we've had some some uh, some other of the uh, outriders unavailable, so Bozo has uh, graciously stepped in to be able to fill in some shoes here. Obviously, uh, Diamond Dave normally in the second seat, but uh, he's uh, I think going on a way, like a, a road trip with his family or something like that. So, you know, Bozo was able to come in here. We really appreciate you, of course. Uh, being able to jump in here and help out with the review and the preview. Um, let's talk about what a watch along is really quickly for the folks out there that might not be aware of what a watch along actually is. Uh, watch alongs are a live stream companion to the actual game. We don't broadcast the game, but we provide alternative commentary for every away game at Bozo's Granite Bunker that he's at there, which is in parts unknown, New Hampshire. Tune in about 15 minutes before kickoff to TJ TJRS when the Jacks are on the road and you'll get some uh, quality entertainment uh, and decent commentary for the most part along with your broadcast. Maybe I'll go pro someday, but uh, not not anytime soon. Following my boy Rob Hammerschmidt's there you go. Footsteps. Maybe I'll be on the sidelines. Wheels, get at me. I'll be your apprentice. <laughs> there you go. And with that being said, let's move over to the actual game itself. Uh, this is, of course, the Houston Review. And I'm taking this directly from the Free Jacks article from Elsa Edgar. Um, on an 82-degree night at Houston, the New England Free Jacks knocked off the last undefeated Major League Rugby team, the Houston Sabercats, 47-35. to The sellout crowd was treated to a Phenomenal rugby match, which I absolutely agree with that, with that assessment. The uh, Sabercats scored first at the five-minute mark when Vice Captain Christian Dyer scored off a set piece to make it 5-0. David Kotza, um conversion attempt double dinked off the goalpost and was no good. This began a trend as Kotsar, uh would not have a good kicking night, missing all five of his conversions attempts which is kind of baffling in modern rugby that you would miss that many. 
But um, two minutes later, Malachi Hala Nagata uh, scored a try for the Free Jacks. Jason Patras conversion made it seven to five at the 12 minute mark. Patras sent a beautiful kick chase forward that we and Conradi converted into a try. Patras made his second conversion of the mi- a night, making it. 14 to 5. Nearly 10 minutes later, Houston made a penalty kick to pull within uh, 14 to 8. But in response, Patras chased down his own kick after a line out uh, win to score a try. His conversion made the score 21 to 8. While the Free Jacks seemed to be in control of the match, Wayne Vanderbank received a yellow card at 24 minutes in, and Houston took advantage of his absence at the 26 and 34 minute marks. Uh, Jeremy Masaligo and Kotsar scored uh, Sabre Cat tries. Kotsar missed both conversions, setting the score at 21 to 18. Just before halftime, the Free Jacks looked to regain control of the match when Wayne Vanderbank scored his second try of the game after a five meter line out. Patras' conversion was good, making the score Free Jacks 28, Saber Cats 18. It was the Free Jacks' fourth try of the game, giving them a bonus point before halftime, their first since round one of the season. Wanted to ask you about your first uh, first half thoughts because for the folks that watched the watch along, I was completely baffled with the Free Jacks leading by ten at halftime. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, we we really had no rights to be leading the game. The scrum was absolutely uh, dominated. Uh, Houston scrum dominated the Free Jacks scrum. We were pushed around the park. I forget what the uh, possession percentage was, but it was something insane, man. It was like it was pretty much all Houston on attack and we were making tackle after tackle Um, and credit to the free Jacks defense. When they did get beat, they only got beat out wide, which made those conversions uh, very, very difficult. Uh, So while I will agree, missing five conversion attempts sucks Mm -hmm. uh, in the first half, you got to, you got to take these things in context. Almost all, I think every single kick was from the, uh, pretty much on the sideline from Kotzer. And then, And then he was kicking into the wind. So a lot of his kicks actually didn't even make it to the upright. So you would yeah. see it and his accuracy was kind of there, but then it just pushed the wind. Just yeah. you could watch it. You literally watched it in real time. It just cross faced. Right yeah. It yeah. cross faced the crossbar is there. So yeah. And that, that would, that was crucial because I remember, I can't remember at what point in the match it was second half. We'll get to that, but it was like adding them all up. The five missed conversions was 10 points. That changes the mm-hmm. whole dynamic of the game. Totally. Um, So, yeah, very fortunate for the Free Jacks. But, yeah, I think the Free Jacks were pretty much just dominated at set piece, dominated in possession, but played really had some really good defensive sets in there. Mm -hmm. And then just on attack, I don't know what coffee shop Larry took everybody to. (laughs) I said it on the live stream. It was incredible. These guys were laser focused. Shout out to Green Mountain Boy mini team member Jason Potros getting a snub, getting the snub from the MLR again for that first 15 uh, 10 jersey in favor of Sam Windsor from Seattle. Who is that guy? Former (laughs) New York iron worker, rooster booster, whatever the heck. Also Houston Sabercat. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah. So I don't. Listen, what a what a first half from him. What a first yeah. half from uh, Wayne Vanderbank. Um, I, I'd say the yellow that he got was appropriate. I was just bummed for him. Yeah, same. Uh, just imagine what he could have done if he was still on the pitch for the entire 80, as Ranger John mentioned to me. I'd kind of forgotten that he got that yellow card uh, because he was just so dominant throughout the entire game. But yeah, yeah, maybe maybe could have scored another one if he wasn't off of the pitch for ten minutes. Um, really, I, real quick about him too. What, yeah. what I think what's crazy with with Vanderbank is like, I don't know what it is about him, man. I just it's the way he plays, the things he sees, and, and just the way he carries the ball. It's like a decision making thing too, because it's mm-hmm. not just that he's a bowling ball. Some of those tries, like I don't know if other players make that decision to kind of just go for it. Nope. And yeah, and it was incredible stuff to see. So it was really cool. He's just super confident in his ability to not go down with that first defender. That first defender has no abil- no chance of bringing him down to the, the ground. Just yeah. it doesn't happen. Like watch his you know takes every single time from this year and from two years ago. That first defender yeah. has no chance, man. Like you got to get somebody else in there because he's always you know moving his feet when he's in a tackle. He will brush off of you with a stiff arm. Like it's impossible. My mom chiming in here. Hey, Phil and Dave. Uh, not quite Dave, but all right. 
Um, hey, they just missed the diamond. All right. Absence yeah. makes the heart grow fonder. Exactly. I'll do my best, Dave, but yeah, I right. can't, I can't be as weird. I'm sorry. Yeah. The Prince of weird, it, you know, cannot be replicated. No. Um, let's see here. Let's go back to the free decks article with regards to the second half here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, the second half began with the wind in the Free Jacks' face at the 48-minute mark. Reese McDonald chased down a beautiful run and kick, beautiful run and kick chase from Paula Bellincana to score a try. The conversion was no good, making the score 33 to 18. The early portion of the second half was dominated by the Free Jacks as Vanderbank added a second try. Patros converted the uh, made the conversion rather to make it 40 to 18. I will just say something real quick uh, with regard to this article. It doesn't mention the first half scrum dominance by Houston, which was evident to everybody that watched the game there in the stands and that at home, you know, it wasn't a big factor in, in regards to the outcome of the game, but it was definitely a huge factor when you consider, you know, that's exactly what Houston wanted to do. We were playing. Uh, two out of our three front row guys were not starters. So it's one of those things where, like, the, the bomb squad came on um, very early in the second half. But Houston, obviously a dominant team in the forward area. They want to bruise guys that, like, play uh, the other opposition. And they just want to be able to play bully ball, essentially, and rugby ground and pound, that type of style. Um, but uh, it wasn't very effective against the Free Jacks with our dominance in the backs uh, with Jason Potras pulling the strings here. After the final 20 minutes, Houston responded with three tries scored by Kotza, misconversion, uh, and Lion Latu, misconversion, uh, Tian Amersis, uh, AJ Alatimo, conversion, to pull within five points at 40 35. With three minutes to play, the Free Jacks put the game away. Vanderbank scored his third try of the game, and Postros made the conversion to make the final score. 47 to 35. The Free Jacks scored seven tries in the day's match, by far their best offensive output of the entire season. Vanderbank's third try of the game gave him a hat trick, and he was named player of the match. His quote is The boys are starting to click. When we hit our stride, we are a difficult team to beat. We know every team is going to come for us. So we have to be we have to be up for it every week, which is something that we've talked about on this show. Uh, the whole idea of playing the champions makes any mouse look like a lion um, with the belief that they're going to knock off a big team and and celebrate like they've won the World Series, as we've seen Old Glory DC do. And then they proceeded to score uh, to tie two games after that. So uh, the Free Jacks used their entire bench in the match, making it a true team victory. The Free Jacks are now 5-1, and one, and they remain in first place in the Eastern Conference. The Free Jacks return home next week for a match against the Seattle Seawolves at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and it will air at 2 p.m. Eastern time on NBC Sports Boston, which is always encouraging. There's no tape delay there. Um, overall thoughts on the game, Bozo? Yeah, so... Obviously, dub's a dub, great win. Um, I was extremely concerned, and you remember this well from the watch along. I was extremely concerned of the 20 something points that are nearly that they almost let a 22 point lead uh evaporate right. when it's when it's 40 35. I think there was like seven minutes left or so when that score ticked over, and it's like that's very much a winnable game for Houston at that point, um, mm -hmm. especially given our homeboy our number one supporter there in the middle uh, yeah. willing to, willing to slow, you know, who had already showed us a slice of cheese and blew the whistle on us 15 times in the match. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was extremely concerned. You just don't, I get it, man. That's rugby. That's sport, right? Punch counter punch. You're never going to have that perfect win. It's never going to go all your way. The other, the opposition always has a say uh, in the match. But man, I just really didn't like that. I think that that, that can't become a habit. Uh, you know that that did not escape the watchful eye of Scott Matthew and, and the coaching group uh, in terms of their assessment of the game. I'm sure that they've picked up on it. I'm sure the Free Jacks will work on it. Uh, I don't I don't know what it is about this team though, man. It, late in games, they they just let other teams in. I, I just I want to I've been saying it almost for I feel like a broken record for like a season and a half. I don't know what it is, but I just want that last 20. I want I want the free jacks in the last 20 to literally put their foot on the neck of the other team 
mm-hmm. and just stop, stop, stop. Totally. Like no mercy. Yep. Uh, but other than that, I mean, what an attacking performance first bonus point since week one, which I will say basically first bonus point, one of the season, you can't, you can't take on the new guys and be like, yeah, that was a great win. Over right. A, a yeah. U-20, you know, you got to take that one with a grain of salt. Uh, but I really, I really thought the free jacks looked very dangerous too. Very impressed with that attack, man. It's crazy. It, it really tries. is. Seven tries against a Houston team that was basically, they were truly undefeated and basically the best team in the West, uh, not on point standings, but you know, based on everybody's assessment with them being undefeated. To go down to Houston, to play that team the, the way that they did, it's a Scott Massey, Scott Matthew masterclass, in my opinion, uh, yep. with being able to absolutely shred their defense with our dominant backs. Um, it was really, really impressive to see. I was never expecting that type of result. I, I mean, I thought it would be a little closer. And what you're talking about is a concern. We've talked about this all season long where Free Jacks don't put teams away. Uh, teams score in the, in the last, like, 10 minutes consistently against us, and sometimes that doesn't really matter. It's in garbage time. It doesn't change the result. But most of the time it is kind of a closer game, and it, it makes us all a little nervous. It becomes squeaky bum time. And uh, watching that game, obviously it got it got tight at the end there, and Wayne Vanderbank kind of saved our ass a little bit with yeah. uh, his individual brilliance in this game with scoring three tries, the most important one being at the end to put some distance between ourselves and Houston. But just a, an amazing a performance because, like, we all know that the Free Jacks are very, very good. But when you put in that type of dominance, especially with our back line, against a very good uh, Houston team, I'm just like, holy crap, we were really good at rugby. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. there's con- there's concerns. There's concerns with this team. Um, we're not undefeated. We're not blowing teams out of the water left and right. We're not beating them by 80 points. You know, it's a very different year. Uh, and the concerns are real, but it's still nice. It feels good to be good, man. Really yeah. Is. Yeah. The last thing I'll say about it is, you know, you, you did mention, you know, hey, it's in garbage time. It doesn't change your result. But without Wayne Vanderbank's try, Houston escapes the match with two points. Right now, right. that doesn't matter to us because they're Helps in the West. Up. Yeah, but it does matter when we play East teams and we allow them to claw, claw their yes. way back in. Because it, listen, we're we, we're through what week six? It's week six, man. There's ten more weeks to go in this season, uh, right? That was week. Or six. this is week eight. Uh, so that was week seven. No, I mess with, yeah, yeah you're but either yeah, that's right. Uh, week seven, I'm off by one. My bad. I forgot about the bye week. But regardless, we're about at the halfway point of the season. There's a lot yes. of rugby left to be played, and, and you just don't know when that table point is going to matter. Table points matter, man, and that's that's why they give them because uh, yeah. they reward your 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 superior performance even in defeat. And so I just want us to see us more deny those, like yeah. not allow those to happen. I listen. I agree. I mean, one of my, um, I think my first week was no mercy was my actual, you know, key to the game, and I, I think that should be the approach always. I hate to see us, you know, lose focus or whatever you want to call it, and let teams come back in and, and knock on the door and try to steal one from us. Just like DC did that, right? The, right. the, the ill discipline that we showed at home at Fort Quincy is unacceptable, and they crept back into that game and won with a very difficult kick made by a very very good fly half, uh, and that the end result is we lose a little bit of that reputation of being a fortress. We lose the record of having beat Eastern conference teams for the entire last season. And we go into, you know, the next week being one and one. So it wasn't a good result back then. And it's still a concern to this day. You can't let teams come back like that. And by the way, the ill discipline still hasn't been solved because last, you know, the last game we saw what, like 10 penalties in the first half, like a couple of those from the scrum though. So it can, not forgiven, but yeah, yep. yeah, it's Not tough, right. man. But seven tries in Houston, man, I'll take it. I'm sorry, hard. Right. It, I, I we're being hard on, we're being hard on him right now, and yeah. and I, I I mean I mean this with like all due respect and, and love to the players and the team, the coaching staff. I know the boys are working hard. We just I don't know, man. As fans, we just love that extra ammo to just be able to dance on graves just a little harder, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still can dubs a dub, right? Like they got True. it done ultimately, but there are things that can be fixed with this team, and we realize that. Let's yeah. move over to musket size pants tent. I've got AJ Alatimu, 31 years old, which I wasn't – I didn't realize he was that old. Um, Samoan fly half, formerly with Seattle Seawolves. This guy is a has a cannon for a leg. I know Seattle fans are scratching their head about the departure uh, from the Pacific Northwest for this guy down there in Houston now. How do you let a guy like that 
walk out the door. Like I, I don't quite understand. That'd be like Jason Patras. Like we're, we're saying goodbye to him and trading up somewhere else. Doesn't seem quite right. But he didn't have the best decision making in that game against the Jacks. But overall, a great player and a huge offseason pickup for Houston. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, am I supposed to pick one or? Uh, no. no, no. But you can make a comment about uh, AJ. <laughs> yeah. What a, what a leg. Cannon for a leg. <laughs> there you go. Moving uh, right along. Moving right along. Uh, let's move over. Storming right along. Not quite, that's but right. uh, that's what we used to say in the show. Um, next one up is Wayne Vanderbank. Uh, for me, is my MVP. Wayne's World, party time, excellent. I've talked about how people forgot how good he was uh, based on his injury-plagued season last year, but the entire league took notice on Saturday. He bagged himself a hat trick and could have had more if he had not – if you've not seen a slice of cheese, as we talked about, in the form of a yellow card in this game. He's electric with ball in hand. He's a terror for that first defender, as I've mentioned. He doesn't get tackled by the first defender. He might be the best in the league at meters after initial contact. I don't know if that's a stat that people keep, but he's got to be really, really high up there. So yeah. happy for this guy. The Free Jacks, once again, are in the debate about the best center pairing in the league with LaRue, Boardroom Benny. Let's not forget about him, who just recently had 50 caps. Congratulations to Ben. And Wayne Vanderbank. Like, really, really good. Of course, you got Gabe Casey waiting in the wings, injured right now, but he's another good, good young player. Um, who is your MVP? Yeah, I mean, it got to got to run the table with uh, Wayne Vanderbank, but I'm going to channel – my diamond dave and wow give 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 some positive shout outs congrats boardroom benny yes on uh on your 50th appearance sure in sure. the mlr um but i would also say with with ben lesage man he's kind of he's had a great season he scored way more tries this season uh already than he than he did last year i think he only got one last year yes but he but man he He's back to his cerebral self. Like the guy's just everywhere, complete menace in defense. Mm -hmm. Great supporter, runs great lines. He had a great couple of good line breaks and offloads and stuff like that. It's just that little stuff um, that he does all around the pitch. So shout out to him. And then, um, yeah, I don't think I got anybody else that was a standout performer. Everyone else kind of grounded out. So just shout out to the rest of the team for, for going Paul down. Was, yeah, well, yeah. Had a hell of a game. He yeah. already got my shout out for getting snubbed. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Jason, you are the fly half of the week. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I'm overriding the uh, the frauds at MLR social media who have no idea uh, what go. they're talking about. But it was a great team win. So just shout out to the entire team, man. Uh, and geez, is there a formula brewing here, Phil? Go away, Western Conference, the state of Texas, the head coach is Scott Matthew. We make some not questionable, but people are confused at selections yet we go down there and we get a huge win not just like hey everything went our way and we won like nope like that was actually a really big battle that we had with houston so shout out to the entire team yeah. uh, for grinding it out and providing an entertaining match as the write-up uh, mentioned at the beginning it was what an incredible match to watch if you're if at the end of, at the end of the year i would say this would be one where if you're pulling from the entire mlr that you would want to go back and just and rewatch from yep. start to finish this is going to be one of them so it was a awesome. great game for the neutrals out there it was high scoring you know the free jacks um did a great job um and and obviously houston in the first half if you're like a forwards guy you love scrums watch that because they had some really really pretty ones in there absolute domination in that aspect uh but yeah really really great game to watch and um i'll just say uh, again an amazing scott matthew master class as you're referencing Back in 2022, it was, we took a squad that most people would consider our B team down to Austin, who was high flying at that time, the Jabronis, and got the W. And this is kind of similar to that in that way where we're not starting certain guys that you would expect to be every week starters and still getting the W. Um, so very, very awesome to see that as well. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And with that being said, we've got one word to exit the video in three, two, one, huzzah! huzzah.